Ah, welcome to the nightcap. It's your girl, Carolina Sanchez, and I am trying to meditate, honey. I am trying to self-heal because society be society, okay? Traumas be trauma-ing, and therapy can be a little expensive. So how do you self-heal? Does meditate, oh, a drink. Oh, it's the best kind of meditation. And with some girlfriends, girl, we can have a girl's night, drink, and uh, talk about self-healing. Let's get into it. Yeah, what's up for a nightcap? Chill, you know, kick back. All right, I got my drinks and I got my girls on the couch. Back in the building is Paige Crutcher behind the Adultish Wines podcast, who knows all about talking through all of the traumas and the mental health issues we be having. And hairstylist, entrepreneur, Jada Simpson is in the building for the yes, first yes. time. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're talking about alternative ways of self-healing. Um, I think therapy is super important and everyone should invest in themselves and yes. seek therapy. However, some people don't have those means. Some people are too scared. And we tend to help ourselves some way, shape, or form or another. What do you guys turn to to self-heal whenever you're dealing with some tough I think talking to my friends and family is probably like the easy thing to turn to. Walking outside, I love mm. getting sunshine, fresh air. Um, and then my podcast is probably, I mean, I don't turn to do that every day, like when I'm having a bad day, but it does make me feel lighter, more connected, more grounded to people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you've made me cry on your you podcast. Cry, <laughs> laugh. Yes. All of the feels. I feel like I've, listening to your podcast, not on your <laughs> podcast, I have definitely cried from laughing and cried yeah. from emotion in the same yeah. episode. It's a safe space, one for me to get to know people better. And then I feel like, and I've heard this from my guests, is that it's a safe place for them. Yeah. So it's my main. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Jada, what about you? One of my top prayer, journaling, gratitude. That carries me a lot. Um, one of my practices I started in 2019 was every day, every night, writing down something that I'm grateful for. And when I say I saw a huge change in my life, in my mindset, to where it's, it's a huge help. And I share that so much. Mm. Did you get like a gratitude journal? This, a you're box. like probably the third person. A, a box. box. Okay, tell me Speaking more. Hold up. An old oatmeal box. Toss it in. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, hold up, hold up. Okay, you get an oatmeal box, the Qu Quakers, mm -hmm. Quaker Oaks. You take out all the the instant oatmeal out. Little sticky notes. And just taking that time to write down what you're appreciative about, what you're grateful for. Something good that happened because y'all know life be life in. Yeah. So much going on mm -hmm. and sometimes we can focus on what's wrong versus all the things that's going right. So. so give me an example. So today, tonight, or last night, what did you write on a sticky note before dumping it in? Because um, I feel like you you might run out if you're 365 every day like uh, happy to be alive happy to have family <laughs> like what are you what are you what are you writing down appreciative for my state of mind to accept my emotions feel how I feel let it out mm. and keep on going because I'll be honest I'm actually going through a breakup a uncomfortable season right now mm, mm. you know but being able to appreciate the goods that I got in the relationship the friendship and being open for more that's really helping me because it's Valentine's Day, you know what I'm Ooh. saying? All of that, you seeing all of this, but I just feel so good, you know? Okay, all right, look, can we dive into breakups? Sure. And the healing behind a breakup because Lord, <laughs> therapy ain't enough, okay, when it comes to a breakup. How do y'all feel about getting under someone else to get over someone? <laughs> I'm not y'all making the Which same you? face. <laughs> I wanted I've, to get done it. Go ahead. I've done it and it's worked, but I do think it depends on the season of life that you're in when that happens. Most recently, I wouldn't call it a breakup, but like a stop of a situationship happened. That's more where I'm at too. I don't mean to cut you off. But oh, no, yeah. no, no, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. for me, getting under somebody else was not what I needed. Mm. I needed time to heal myself and understand what I was really looking for and realize that that was not healing for me. Um, and the mindset that I was able to get in from that, you know, everyone tells you you need to love yourself before you can love anyone else. And I thought I had always loved myself. I think I obviously a little bit, but like yeah. I truly feel after I gave myself that time, like I'm the Period. Damn, <laughs> come on. Okay, so what was the self-healing journey you went on? Um, not being sexually active with anyone until I felt valued, which 
I came on and talked about with you recently. Um, I did do a little bit of journaling. Um, mirror affirmations, those oh, still are hard for me, but if I can't get it into the mirror, I do say it out loud. Um, what else? Because it's weird, right? It's, it's so weird to just stare in the mirror and be like, you up. No, that's, I love it. I'm, you do? I'm with that all day. <laughs> really? Oh, I love it. I have so many mirrors in my home. I'm sticky notes on the mirror. I love it. My daughter, get in the mirror. Come on. Speak I love yourself. that. Absolutely. I'm inspired about the sticky note thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Now I'm imagining a, a house full of sticky notes. And you okay. asked, was that intimidating to do or hard to do, like, the gratitude every day? Yeah. Because I did buy, like, that 365-day gratitude journal and you write three things that you're grateful for and I would sit there for minutes on minutes and minutes and I couldn't think of something it's hard just, and then I would just be like live like I'm, yeah like, I'm alive I'm alive I'm breathing Which is so, I got all huge. 10 fingers it's and huge. toes yeah it's yeah. huge so we can go deeper we need to go deeper it's more so specific. much more specific oh we're gonna go deeper because guess what <laughs> backstage we have my girl Brittany Noel she's been listening and she's been judging so uh we're gonna bring her over coming up after the break Stay right there. Welcome back to the Nightcap. We've been talking about alternative ways of self-healing with my friends Paige, Jada, and joining us is therapist Brittany Noel, who's back in the building. Thanks for coming, yes. boo. Thank you for the invitation. I missed you. Yeah, I know. I missed you, too. I saw you on Sherry kicking ass, listen, okay? Listen. Thank, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, yeah, yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, you were backstage listening to uh, the methods we take upon ourselves mm -hmm. to heal yes. Uh, yes what are your thoughts i heard some good things i heard some things i liked okay. okay i heard the journaling the affirmations the gratitude list amazing i'm so happy that you're self-aware enough to know that getting under a new man is not <laughs> the way that we heal okay. i'm really happy that i didn't say yes do that <laughs> Yes, I yes. I had a whole ass summer one time after a long uh, relationship, you know, and, and it was it's it a part of me growth right and evolution, oh. right? But we don't want to make that the standard. Okay, <laughs> but it's not <laughs> bad per se. Correct. I very rarely you will hear me say that something is either good or bad. I always say it's either serving me or not serving me. Oh, right. And depending on what season of life I'm in and what my goals are. Sometimes the whole season serves me mm. and sometimes it does not. Right. So you have to be honest with yourself about what you want, what kind of life you're trying to build. And that's going to help me dictate what behaviors I should be doing. That's going to get me where I want to be. So you have to be honest with yourself. Does a whole season serve me right now? Yes. And that was not for you. You were like, I need no, a celibate. I just felt so <laughs> validated by you. I was like, yes, that's what I did. Listen, and sometimes you need it to teach you. I actually don't like this I didn't. and I want a deeper Ooh. connection yeah. and I want someone to cuddle with and I want someone to have vulnerability with and this right here is not giving me that so I'm going to opt out of this and choose a better and make a better decision mm -hmm. and that's where your healthy coping skills come in at yeah and mm -hmm. I mean you're you're teaching your daughter some phenomenal tips by making her get in front of the yeah. mirror so mm -hmm. for those of us who are still intimidated by that self-reflection. Yes, yes. <laughs> Y'all got some tips for us? Cause I do not know how to look in the mirror and say positive things. Mm. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Really just speaking life, saying what I see, what I want to see for my life, reminding myself of who I am. I'm, to be honest, I'm really kind of all day nurturing myself. Like you doing a good job, you on your way. I just left the salon doing hair, hurrying up trying to get here and I'm, you on your way, it's working out, keep going. Because if not, you'll find yourself saying the opposite. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, I suck, I'm crazy, I'm always late. Ah, da, 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 da. No, you on your way. Yeah. How, you okay, I'm trying to get to Jada's love. <laughs> yes, yes. So how do we train ourselves uh -huh. to speak highly of ourselves to ourselves? Because yes. that, I am more of a yeah. you're always late. <laughs> you got too many pounds on you right now. You know, like, yeah, it's always the bad things Absolutely. that I'm speaking to myself comically because I'm a funny <laughs> <laughs> Of course, but it's not it's not the positive. It's right. not like oh your hair's heron today. You, you look beautiful. You're doing great Like it's yeah. never the positive stuff. Mm. Yeah, what Jada's describing is what we call a nurturing voice and This was something that I had to learn in my 20s because I didn't necessarily grow up in a household where 
positive affirmations were just given out, mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So we were, we learned a lot about what we weren't doing right. And so I had to develop an, a voice that was nurturing. And I say, if this was your baby, if this was your child, how would you speak to your child when they messed up? Mm. How would you speak to your child when they made a mistake, right? And most importantly, if a stranger on the street can approach you and say the same thing you just said to yourself, would that be appropriate? So yeah. if, a, if a complete stranger walked up to you and said this thing that you say to you every day, would we be bailing you out of jail right now? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> would there be an altercation, right? And the truth is, is that many times we speak to ourselves worse than we would allow a complete stranger to speak to us. But your voice is the only voice you hear from sun up to sundown. So how is that appropriate? Right. So we have to set boundaries. And I think boundaries is one of the most underrated coping skills <laughs> that you can think of. And when I say boundaries, most people think about, oh, other people. But do you have boundaries on you? What is appropriate for how you're going to speak to yourself, how you're going to treat, treat yourself, how you're going to care for your mind, your body, your spirit, your heart? What boundaries do you live by that keeps you in alignment to be the healthy version of yourself that you want to be? Oh, we got to talk about these boundaries because how do we set them up? Okay. You stay right there. We'll be right back. We've got every episode of the Nightcap and we can go for hours. Download the Fox Local app on any of the following smart TV platforms and get in on the fun. Welcome back to the Nightcap. We've been talking about alternative self-healing ways with my girls. We've got Paige, we've got Jada, and we've got therapist Brittany Noel. And you just uh, dropped a whole bunch of truth bombs on us mm -hmm. and mentioned the big word, uh, boundaries. Absolutely, absolutely. So how do we set those up, not mm -hmm. only for others, but ourselves to not go into that negative territory that people like me tend to do? Absolutely. I think to you guys start this conversation off talking about how do we self heal. And I have found that if you get good at setting boundaries in your life period, you have a lot less to heal from. I can heal my anxiety if I cut off access to the people who are making me anxious. I can deal with my depression if I stop going into places that make me compare myself to others and I go into, I'm not good enough, I'm not this, I'm not that. If I set boundaries around what I'm consuming, meaning mentally, emotionally, spiritually, then I have less things that I need to recover from. So what are you exposing yourself every day that's making your mental, mental and emotional health worse? And now let's start by eliminating those things and replacing them with things that empower me. Mm. That's the first boundary that you should always work on. How you ladies feel about that? Are you good about your boundaries? Cause I ain't, Absolutely. I'd be going into the yes. places that make me feel like Okay, oh, no, let's I'm talk a, about that. I'm a recovering people <laughs> pleaser. So my boundaries, I used to have zero, zero mm -hmm. boundaries, negative boundaries. Um, and I would say about six, seven years ago at this point is when my boundary journey yeah. started. And I can honestly say that like, I'm in, I'm in the top tier for myself. Oh, very good. Right. Yeah, I do. Baby, I, I love that. <laughs> All right, it, Jada, I mean, I feel like you have you achieved that when you were two or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> over a good one. No, I just have to get serious with myself. Like, if it's affecting me, if it's hurting me, if it's draining me, let that go. And how we were talking about the affirmations and how you talk to yourself. It was like, you get tired of, oh, I'm too messy, I'm this and that. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I'm good, I got this, I'm on my way. Life is good, let's keep going. Why'd you have to say messy? I immediately thought of my office, my <laughs> house, like, I'm, I am a mess. I, I replaced that word with, um, I'll look at my house, I'm like, wow, it looks very lived in, very active in here, I'm alive, a lot going on. All right, next. Cognitive restructuring. <laughs> That's exactly what That's that good. is, right? Absolutely. Like re my producer said rewiring the brain. Cognitive restructuring. It's it sounds like the exact same thing, but in a exactly. therapist um Because what you tell yourself, you live, right? Mm -hmm. So if I tell myself I'm messy, if I tell myself I'm late, if I tell myself I'm these negative things, most times we're, we're giving ourselves a label without taking into account all of these other factors in our lives. Absolutely. It's not that I'm late. I'm actually an active mother and I have kids to pick up and I have husbands to take care of. I'm living my life. So don't deem me this negative label because I didn't meet one criteria when I'm doing very well in these other areas of my life. Yeah. So it helps you balance your perspective of who you are. Love that. Oh my God. I, you, I, I told my producer before you arrived because 
you know, you haven't been here in, in a minute. Uh -huh. Every time you on this show, Brittany. Your face does that. I, I feel like I'm in a real therapist situation <laughs> and she's attacking me every time. Not I feel attacking. like I'm, I'm going just to church with her. Thing. And it's, it comes from a place of love. I think one of the things I love working with people on is first of all, identifying what are the negative coping, what, coping skills that we use, the ones that are not serving us. Okay, yeah, what are the alternative self-healing ways we should not be yes, partaking in? exactly. Self-medicating. Mm. Self-medicating. Now, you can medicate through <laughs> consumption. <laughs> not you grabbing the drink. <laughs> Me too, okay? Uh -huh. Okay, so some people can overindulge into alcohol, but we can also overindulge into eating. Yeah. We can overindulge into partying. We can overindulge into shopping. Anything done in too much in right? excess in mm. access becomes unhealthy and it's the way in which we are numbing ourselves from actually feeling and processing what is going on on the inside so most times you'll see self-medicating through of course drugs alcohol um you know drinking <laughs> she, 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 she just went like this in her head she's like, she's like, i'm not pointing any fingers I'm not, I'm not pointing any fingers right right but i i love calling people out on the stuff that you don't get judged for like being a workaholic. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I don't have time to process emotions if I work 60 hours a week. Right. Right. Or so, I'm at the gym for four hours a day. I'm at the day. gym four hours a day. You know, this is healthy, <laughs> but I'm mm. not spending time actually identifying, labeling my emotions, understanding where they come from, and finding a resolution that I can live with. <laughs> okay. So. I love it. Before they book the therapy session yes. or they book the therapy session, mm -hmm. what other alternative ways can they tackle today if they need to heal yeah. from something they're going through? Take a full assessment of yourself and your mind, your emotions and your body, right? Physically, your body will show signs of trauma and stress um, that, we, that we literally just get used to living on a day-to-day -day life. Those tight shoulders are telling you a story, right? That eye that's been flinching for two weeks is telling you a story. Many times our body is communicating that we are under stress and we're overwhelmed and we ignore them or we try to take Tylenol for it. Right? Listen to what your body is telling you. When your mind is overwhelmed, you gotta have coping skills that's gonna help you calm those negative thoughts, deal with those anxious uh, realities. You're gonna have to have coping skills that help you balance out the negative with the positive. That's where that co cognitive restructuring comes in. And your emotions. Learn to label your emotions, okay? Feeling some type of way is not an emotion, okay? <laughs> I have to actually, <laughs> look, she's like, why are you talking about it? I'm feeling some type of way. Feeling feel some, some type, type of way, way is not an emotion, right? <laughs> so that means we have to work on our emotional vocabulary so that I understand what's going on with me and then I can actually communicate it to the people who are making those emotions come out. She's making too much sense. I know. <laughs> Listen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. All right. I got, I got <laughs> to do. Okay. Cheers, cheers ladies. Cheers. Thank you cheers. so much. Cheers, I cheers. hope uh, you, this was a nice little therapy session. No, I loved it. Yes. I loved it. This was and I hope y'all love this drink too. Okay. <laughs> this is actually quite good. I'm not self-medicating. I'm just enjoying a drink with my girls. All right. Coming up next, I'm going to learn from Liv how to make this a black old fashioned. You stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Nightcap. I'm behind the bar now. I've got Liv Johnson here, bartender at Taste Kitchen, and you're here to do what? Back that glass up. Yes, yes, yes. Listen, I loved this old fashioned. Perfect balance. It's not too strong. It's not sweet. It's just chef's kiss. And unfortunately, you're putting me to the test, huh? You're gonna make me make it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, listen. I, I got it. You ready? Yes, let's do it. We're gonna use all Cornelius 18. 56. Okay. okay, and I love Uncle Nearest, okay? Alrighty, okay. Okay, then we're gonna use one ounce of Averni. Ooh, this is an Amaro. <gasps> I didn't do that, I didn't do that. It's okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> self-healing. So you're gonna do two dashes? Two then? dashes, I can do dashes. One, uh, two. Okay. All right. And then we got the ice out. and stir. You're gonna see an atrocity right now, Liv, but it's okay, we're gonna make it work. Wow, okay. okay. Am I, right. no, you're I don't know, better. I lost count. You're getting better, okay, that's Oh, good. I am getting better, hold Look it up. A self-affirmation of you are good at stirring. <laughs> you're not bad at this, you're learning. Give yourself the grace, right? Yes. Okay. All right. And so, then. You're gonna pour it in the cup? Yes. <gasps> Perfect. 
I thought I was gonna lose it right there. And I'm gonna top it off with some ice. ice. Bada bing. Not too much. And then we're gonna do a lemon square for a garnish. Mm. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, let me see. Let me see how I did. How'd I do? <laughs> mm. Oh, I did good. Oh, y'all ready for your refills? Oh, okay, y'all y'all still drinking. I already refilled y'all during the break. All right, listen. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful time going through your self-healing journey. Go to therapy, but also work on those affirmations. Check your mental, your emotional, and your physical. Okay, all right. Cheers to you. We'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Missed out on the nightcap? Well, head on over to our YouTube page and catch up with Carolina. You can watch full episodes anytime you want. And don't forget to share it with your friends because we got to keep the conversation flowing. Mm. So this one is not going to hurt as much as this one. Watch the nightcap at 1130 on Fox 26 and anytime on Fox Soul.